Hi there, welcome to Nepi Nevest and welcome to June 25, 2024. We have about one hour left in normal trading and then we get a 10 minute closing auction. And I try to emphasize those two words, closing auction, particularly auction, because of a comment that was left in yesterday's video. I bet you I can't find it now. Here it is. Swimming11 asked, can you explain what closing option is, please? So I had to read that a few times and I thought, I think it's around the closing auction. So I will probably will explain that right now uh, via ASX website. I'm pretty sure they have it. Closing auction ASX. Uh, so the closing single price auction takes place between 4.10 p.m. and 4.11 p.m. So normal trading, and when I say normal trading, means you can put um, any sort of order in to buy or sell a company, and you can buy or sell that company in that moment. But there is no buying or selling during that 10-minute or 11-minute closing auction. But you can still put bids to sell or buy a company during that 11-minute period, or maybe 10 to 11, because the actual closing auction is not uh, a given second. It's uh, randomly chosen, so there's less manipulation going on. And you do see a lot of manipulation going on in the closing auction. In fact, here it is from Stockhead. Why not? Stockhead. So between 4.10 and 4.11, the market enters what is known as a single closing single price auction, which is where the ASX calculates closing prices for each stock. Well, that doesn't give uh, an absolute, um, absolute definition. I thought it was given more of a definition. So what you do is, I think I've done a video on this, or maybe I was planning to do a video on this. So what happens is if the share price, let's actually go to a company. So we're not in closing auction right now. I did buy Regal Partners yesterday. So the share price is 330. So what you see during closing auction is a lot of buyers and sells either above. So a lot of buyers above the price, a lot of sell bids below the price. Uh, so if I really wanted to buy Regal Partners, I'll put in a bid for some shares at a share price of $3.60. Doesn't mean I'm going to buy shares at $3.60 because what the system does, it adds up or it sort of matches all the buy and sell bids to come up with the closing price. So if you really want to buy some shares in a company, you put in the higher price. If you really want to sell the company, you put in a lower price. That way your bid will be matched. Now, the bid price for Regal Partners might have gone up to 332 because there's more buyers and sellers in the closing auction, or it might go down. You just don't know, but they do have an indicative price. Now, if this video lasts four hours, not four hours, one hour, I will show you the closing auction at the end of the video. Maybe because I am thinking of doing a comment, or not a comment video, what do you call it? Um, an answer and reply video instead of, in fact, I might do that at the end of my answer and reply video. Okay, so I've gone a little bit of a tangent there in regards to the closing auction. So maybe I have to enunciate my words a little bit more in my videos. I don't know. Anyway, so the agenda for today's video, no tweets, because I want this video to be within 30 minutes if I can. And then I'll talk about the closing auction in an answer reply video. So we'll talk about the ASX today, the best and worst performing sectors, indices, and companies, and then we'll have a look at the top five announcements of the day. A few other companies release announcements after 10 a.m., and I'll discuss these three companies because I thought I'd come, in, come up with a complete top five without any honorable mentions, but, but I did have a look at some announcements that were released because at about 10 a.m., I go off and do other things, and then I'll come back to the computer uh, before closing, have a look at the rest of the, option, rest of the announcements being released today. For example, oh, another one has just been released by Kip McGraw Education Centers, a trading update. So instead of opening up that now, I'm going to look at that. Not my favorite type of business, uh, but we'll have a look at this trading update. Uh, an announcement I have not had a look at just yet. But after 10 a.m., we've seen quite a few announcements being released. 
in particular, Calyx Limited, Etherstack, and Vonix Limited has been taken out, or that is entered a scheme of arrangement. That's why Vonix share price is up 94.44%. Now, did not release anything good in terms of financial performance. And we'll have a look at the charts of all these three companies. And what the whole reason I go through this process is I look for companies whose shares are breaking out. So we'll see if either of these three companies' shares are breaking out. And then we have a look at uh, KIPP McGrath Education Centers. Uh, and then we'll have a look at a few charts if I've got time. So let's get stuck into it because I've already wasted five minutes. And let's have a look at the ASX today. It's been a good day, hasn't it? And even though like um, NVIDIA was down uh, overnight, I think the NASDAQ was down about 0.7%. The Dow Jones Industrial Average was up, and I think we're followed from them because we're more like the Dow Jones Industrial Average than the NASDAQ. But overall, a pretty good day. Everything is up. Tax had the weakest uh, by far of the five indices I can see up here, but that's probably understandable. And mining's had the best. So let's have a look at the different sectors and indices, and everything's green. Although IT is only up 0.06%, and Energy's had a great day too, up 2.25%. However, one of the companies I will be featuring in my top five announcements of the of the day is an energy company. And last time I looked, they were down, and there is reasons behind that. Real estate's had a good day, materials, staples, financials, telecommunications, all up by over 1%, and discretionary almost over up over 1%. So is healthcare up 0.88%, and gold's down. There we go. So even though and I see, you see this a lot, mining does really well, but gold, maybe not. And sometimes you see mining not doing so well, but gold has a beautiful session. So there seems to be not much correlation between mining and gold, even though gold is a mining, a mineral commodity, whatever you want to call it. Uh, any indices down? Let's have a look at the other indices. Just gold. There you go. And the XIJ, information tech, uh, flat. And... I always look at the ASX20. I'm still, I, I might have touched upon this in another video. I'm thinking of doing uh, a video where I rank every 20 companies in the ASX20. And I think I'm going to do it. I'm not sure when though yet. Anyways, let's have a look at the ASX20 up 1.33%. I would say uh, uh, 18 companies up, two down. 18 up, two down. Oh, close. 19 up, one down. What is the unfortunate company that is down? You have a 20%, not 20% chance, 5% chance of getting this right. Uh, I I'm going to say it's WiseTech. Yeah, blah, 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 blah. Why? Why did I pick WiseTech? Tech and tech's weak today. And NASDAQ was weak. So tech's weak and WiseTech's weak. Uh, in fact, uh, the second worst performing company is ANZ Group, up 0.51%. Best performing company, Woodside, Energy, and NAB. BHP, Macquarie, and Santos. So a few energy companies within the best five performing companies of the day. Uh, but I wouldn't get excited and go out and run and buying Woodside Energy just because of today. Share price of that company is still in the downtrend, short-term downtrend. Okay, so let's have a look at the best performing uh, and worst performing companies. And we should see some good companies in this list. Before I touch upon Vonex, now if I didn't have a look at the announcements before I started recording this video, I would be a little bit surprised about Vonex. But yeah, scheme arrangement for Vonex. Obviously, it was at a massive a premium. And yeah, let's have a look at the chart. Vonix. So I this this would be a breakout. I'm almost guaranteeing it because share price wasn't a downtrend yet. This would be the definition of a breakout, but it's the complete wrong type of announcement. I'm looking for good financial uh, announcements from companies to coincide with breakouts like this, but this is a takeover. And the reason why it's a really good one-day candlestick with a really long green body is because they release the scheme of arrangement during trading. So you get these really long bodies, green bodies, really bullish candlesticks. Uh, when a company releases a really good announcement or releases a really good announcement during trading. And yeah, share price of this company has been in a downtrend for a long time. Well, yeah, I'm, I'm going back through time. And there it is. It moved into a downtrend in March, April 2021. So we're talking about through over three years ago, share price has dropped from the mid-teens down to 3.4 cents. And I would call this an opportunistic takeover bid. I'm not sure why the management would say, yes, take it, please, please, um, because it's they bought at the cheap. This is exactly what companies should do, buy 
uh, when companies have fallen to a really low level. If they're, if there's a big if here, if the company has some value, I'm not sure if Vonex does. I have had a look at this company in the past, but I haven't had a look in a long time. That's Vonex. Other ones here, low turnover, no interest. Terra Metals. Oh, Terra Metals. Was this, I'm pretty sure this company featured a few days ago. I'm pretty sure they went into a training halt. Yeah, this company went into a training halt to raise some capital. So they raised a really good announcement a few days ago about a large copper PGE sulfide, and that PGE is platinum group or pl platinum group elements. The next day they went to a training halt to raise some money. And they've come out of the training halt today, and the market likes it. There you go. I thought the share price would have decreased, but it shows you what I know. Uh, anything else here of interest? Oh, EZZ Life Science. After down big yesterday, for some reason, in fact, the share price fell in, during trading yesterday from $1.49 to $1.19. They released an announcement today that will feature in my top five announcements of the day. And share price of that company is up 16%. So very happy to see that company on this list. And one of the reasons is because I'm a shareholder. And Calix, which did release an announcement after 10 a.m., is up 14.8. So I'll have a quick look at that announcement. And we'll have a look at the chart for that company later on. And let's have a look at the top. Actually, by market cap. Got to do that first. Garland's Food, up 7.94%. Guess which company has come in number one on my top five announcements of the day. And you'd probably be guessing right if you think it's Collins Food. Uh, IPD Group is in his list. I'm happy with that shareholder. Uh, I might have a look at the chart for that company if I have time because I was becoming a little bit concerned about that company's chart um, because, well, I'll show you. Uh, Novonics, another good day. Brazilian Rare Earths fell a lot yesterday, up, nice little rebound. Uh, copper companies, lithium companies here. Quite a few exploring companies. Vaisan, another company I own. So happy that's up as well. So let's have a look at the top losers today. And when it comes to top losers, this is not the sort of list you want to make on a day where the market is up by over 1%. But I'd say most of these companies are down because they're small and it's on low turnover. And if you look at the top 10 worst performing companies today, they all have a market cap below, well, Dots Nano is down a fair bit and it has a market cap of 62.8 million, but they all have very low market caps on very low turnover. So nothing of interest here. Dreadnought, that had been running up. I'm going to have a look at Dreadnought as well because that had been popping up onto my screeners, uh, but none of these other companies have been. Zilera, I'm going to have a look at Zilera too because this was a bit of a, I wouldn't say market darling, but they had a really good day about a year ago. And Aurora Labs, Aurora Labs was a bit of a momentum darling not that long ago. When I say not, not, not that long ago, I'm talking about a week ago. So let's have a look at the worst performing companies by market cap. Red Five, no idea what's happening there. Counter up big yesterday, down a little bit today. Could be a chance to buy some shares in that company. Oh, but I don't like the share price is down. So I might just wait to tomorrow to see what happens. And hopefully the selling has come to an end. And nothing else. And Sinlay Milk down 6.8%. And that will feature in my top five announcements of the day for an obvious reason when we get to it. And that's probably it when it comes to the top losers. Okay, so before we have a look at the top five announcements of the day, I just want to touch upon. Calix. Now, I always get the ticker for this company mixed up because Calix seems like the ticker should be CLX, but CLX is CTI Logistics. And I always, almost always go, almost all, for this company, I almost always go CLX and go, oh no, CXL. Because Calix just makes sense. CLX, CLX, not CXL, but uh, CTI Logistics has CLX. Uh, share price up 14.45%. On announcement, Calix announces update on DAC projects. I'm not going to open up this announcement. I did open up, had a look at it, and went, nah, but, you know, whatever. Uh, and let's have a look at the chart for Calix. And is this a breakout? Is this uh, exciting times for Calix? And 
have a look at this chart. And the answer to that is an absolute no. This could be just a bit of a bounce because it's a good day in the market. And maybe share price in Calyx was oversold. Although it's been on a bounce for the uh, last seven trading days. But yeah, this is n not a chart I get enthusiastic about, even though the share price has bounced today. And to be honest with you, if you have a look at the volume, not massive on today. Uh, the volume has increased since January, but no, um, hasn't really coincided with the share price, uh, get, at least going going sideways. Share price is still in a down trend. So even though the share price is up, I'm moving on to the next company. And the next company is Etherstack, down 28.5%. I actually did notice that. Etherstack commences support revenues on Samsung projects. Uh, Samsung project. Sounds pretty good, doesn't it? I thought, okay, I thought the share price would have been up. And I have no reason to understand why the share price is down. Maybe it's because the contract is expected to generate revenue in excess of $550,000 over a 12-month period. Maybe someone read down and went, ah, oh, it's not that much. Um, the company expects an upward step change in long-term recurring support revenues commencing this financial year. Uh, so and the whole point of me doing these videos or going through this process is to find companies whose share price might be breaking out. And we already know the share price of this company is down big. Uh, and have a look at the chart. Share price already in downtrend. Yeah, so yeah, share price has dropped, we'll say 67% since the start of 2023. No interest in Etherstack. And anything else? There was um, Kip McGrath. I've already looked at Vonix, haven't I? Yes. Kip McGrath Education Centers. Share price up 1.61%. They're back to trading. Yes. And the trading update. So the trading update might be okay. Uh, expected to deliver year-on-year -year revenue growth of around 21% with strong contributions from the UK and US markets. So nice growth in revenue, EBITDA flat, and second half uh, compared to previous corresponding period steady. So nice little bit of uh, growth in revenue, but margins are down. And the reason I know margins are down without them even saying it is because EBITDA and profit going nowhere while revenue is up. So margins, by definition, must have come down during this particular half year. So uh, the market's going, mm, whatever. Uh, share price has not really moved. And I probably assume uh, the chart doesn't look all that flash. And the answer to that, or the confirmation in that is just here. Not a good looking chart for Kip McGrath Education Centers. Uh, but whenever I see a company releasing trading update, I am going to have a gander. A look. Okay, so let's get to the top five announcements of the day, and then we'll have a look at the charts. And I've got 12 minutes to go through this. Well, I shouldn't give myself 12 minutes. What I'll do is as long as possible, and then I will do an answer and reply video. So look out for that video on the morning of Wednesday, the 26th of June. So let's get into the top five announcements of the day, starting with Pal Paladin. I was going to say Palladium. Paladin Energy, down 4.53%. When the overall energy sector is having a great day. So why is Paladin down? Nothing too significantly wrong. They just are making an acquisition of fission uranium. Uh, and I am assuming they are doing it. I haven't actually opened up this and had a look. I'm assuming they're doing a capital raising. I could be completely wrong. And this is another listed company, not on the ASX. This must be on the Canadian ETSX. And all I'm going to do is have a look at how they're acquiring this particular asset because they're spending a fair bit of money. Uh, equity value of 1.14 billion Canadian dollars. They they talk about in million, but it's billion. So it's 1,140 million, which is 1.1 billion. So this is not a small acquisition. It's a pretty big acquisition. But how are they paying for it? And I'm hoping they say it somewhere here. Transaction details. And so Paladin, 76%, Fission, 24%. And I don't care about the strategic rationale. I did not see how they're paying for it. I could have, could have completely missed it. Hmm. 
I just, uh, uh, oh, with shares. Oh, efficient shareholders will receive, that makes sense, doesn't it? If this is a listed company, they would just receive shares, which makes sense. Um, 25% premium to the closing price. So hopefully they will, yeah, they will um, like that little premium. So they're just getting shares. Yeah, that makes sense. It all makes sense now. Why? What, yeah, uh, sometimes a light bulb may not come into a head until a little bit later. Yeah, this is an acquisition uh, with shares. Yeah, so shares. So um, yeah, that's how you value this particular acquisition through shares. There you go. Uh, and so let's have a look at the chart for Halliden, PDN. And is this a buy the dip situation? Share price has dropped a fair bit from $18 down to $12.50. So share price has almost dropped 33%. And there has been a little bit of buying today. So maybe a buy the dip situation with Halliden. I'm just going to have a quick look at Boss Energy, another favored a uh, uranium company on the ASX. And this actually looks still looks pretty weak, but Boss Energy is up 1.8%. So a few of the uranium companies are looking a little bit weaker than they have for a while, including Paladin and Boss Energy. Now let's have a look at announcement number four. This is Sinlay Milk. Now I did show you Sinlay Milk's chart in one of my previous videos. I can't remember which one. It might have been, yeah, my technical analysis video. So someone actually did ask me about this company a while back ago. And I, without even knowing um, where the share price was, I just knew the share price of this company was in a real defined downtrend. It was an ugly looking chart. And there are reasons behind that. So the reason I want to talk about Sinai Milk in this video is because they announced a special shareholders meeting which doesn't sound all that exciting, does it? Um, doesn't seem like it would be the sort of announcement that might drive the share price down 8.5%. They want a special shareholders meeting. But the word special there made me open up this announcement. Why is this meeting a special one? And if I was a share of this company, then why would I be owning shares in this company? You'd be, honest, be able to understand that when we look at the chart. This is no way in the realms of being discussed as a high quality company. The only reason you own companies for the long term is if it's a high quality company. And Sinai Milk is not in any term, in any way defined. Uh, there's no way you could define this company as high quality. So you'd only trade this company. That's just my opinion. Um, so yeah, why would you be owning this company's shares? And you'll be able to see why in a second. But so why are they doing this meeting? The meeting is to vote on the resolution to approve the proposed entry into a $130 million shareholder loan to be made to Sinai by Bright Dairy International Investment. Okay. A related company to Bright Dairy Holdings, Sinai is 39% shareholder. Uh, why do they want this to get through? That's the most important thing. Sinai... Will own, this is the probably the most important part because it's actually said the importance of this resolution. Sinlay will only be able to meet its $130 million payment obligations to its bank on the 30, 15th of July if the resolution is approved by shareholders other than Bright Dairy by way of an ordinary re resolution. An ordinary resolution is a re don't need to know that, but if the $130 million payment is not made and the banks do not agree to alternative arrangements, the board believes Sinlay will need to cease trading or initiate a formal insolvency process. So there are some shareholders who saw this and went, oh, crap. Oh, crap. We have to get out because this company is looking pretty weak. Pretty weak if they are reliant on this $130 million loan. So let's have a look at the chart again for Sinlay Milk. And the chart speaks volumes. Well. Well, I said volume for you know, a reason, but this chart speaks the truth. Uh, the share price of this company has fallen from $12, oh, over $12, $12.25 in August 2018 to $27.5. In fact, this is the chart of a non high quality company. Now, if we go back to 2018, that's a nice looking chart, isn't it? So between the time they listed, late 2016 to 2018, that's a pretty nice looking chart. And I was a shareholder at some point during the year. 
But since then, share price has been in a long-term downtrend. Uh, that's the weekly chart. Daily chart looks just as weak. Share price just keeps on dropping. Just keeps on dropping Sinlay Milk. No reason to get excited about this company at all, in my opinion. So Sinlay Milk coming in at number four. Coming in at number three, we have a company called that I do own called EZZ Life Sciences. Share price of this company dropped 12% yesterday. Now, there was a nice run-up before that announcement, uh, higher volume as well, which I thought, hmm, that's interesting. Why is the share price dropping? But the most interesting about yesterday's trading, that's 24th, is it opened at $1.45, went to a high of the $1.49, and then the selling just came in, and the selling drove the share price down from $1.49 to $1.19. So we are talking about a 15, over 15% 15 drop in a fairly short period of time. And then the share price recovered towards the end of trading up to $1.25. So the share price up 16% today. Uh, so it's make a, made a bit of a mockery of all those people who panicked yesterday and sold out, if that's what happened. Uh, and the company decided to release an announcement yesterday or today. Uh, EZZ targets US expansion receives product approvals from the FD. A, this is actually the sort of announcement I do like. When I say approvals from the FDA, it can be a very powerful type of announcement. So they're not releasing everything they have. They're releasing nine products. Nine products, that's a lot, approved by the FDA, have been selected and uh, by the company due to their success in other markets and will form the base of the initial market launch. These products, essential children's essential minerals, Children's Eye Health, Bone Growth Chews, Brain Focus, Magnesium Plus, Aloe Elo Vera, Probiotic Capsules, Liver Detox, Joint Energy Boost Tablets, Men's Performance, which I'm assuming is in the bedroom, not out running. I wouldn't mind that if it's a men's performance in running. Uh, anyway, I am not a big fan. I shouldn't say fan. I'm not a big taker of these sort of supplements. In fact, I don't take any supplements at all because I just don't need any supplements in my opinion. But I know, and I'm not going to name any names, because uh, I know they don't watch this video, but I know someone who takes a plethora of supplements, and I've told this person that if they're taking this amount of sub supplements, they're uh, 40, no, they're not even 40 yet, they're still 39. And I said, if you take this amount of supplements right now, then I hate to think what you'll need when you become old. Um, anyway. It, 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 everyone's different, aren't they? Anyway, so this is sounds like a pretty good announcement. And this company has massive gross margins, between 70 and 80% gross margins, which means they put a lot of their money into advertising, a lot of their cash flow into advertising and marketing. So they're able to spend some time advertising and marketing in the United States. And maybe this company could be a significant growth story. Uh, on the ASX over the next few years. So let's have a look at the chart for EZZ Life Sciences. And you'll be able to see the high volatility in this company over the last four trading days. Two big up days. A little bit of selling today, but not a lot. Two big updates. It says $1.42.5 and a half and Comsex $1.45. So even today, there's been a lot of volatility. You see, there's a bit of a gap between the buyers and sellers. So that's why the share price might be jumping around a fair bit. Uh, but anyway, the main thing is share price in a beautiful uptrend. Uh, and the one thing I'd like to see is a little bit more volume coming in. But we've seen sustained higher volume than normal uh, since March. So over a three-month period, we have seen the volume starting to expand. So a nice announcement from EZZ Life Sciences. This company was mentioned on Osby's The Core about four months ago. And the both, both the analysis uh, laughed at it, even though this company is profitable and a dividend-paying company. Um, I just went, I, I don't even think I had a look at the company, to be honest with you. Uh, so that's coming in number three. We have EZZ Life Sciences. Coming in at number two, this is a surprise. Helios share price. Oh, last time I looked, it was actually up. And I was like, how could Helios share price be up today when the company released a profit downgrade? So Helios released a profit downgrade and the share price is flat. Now, on open, the share price was down about 7 or 8%, which makes sense. But this was a profit upgrade. Now, the reason this is interesting is because it shows some strength 
in the company's share price and valuation at these levels. So some portions of the market probably were expecting um, that their expected guidance they released in the half year results probably wouldn't have been able to be met. And so it was expected. This profit downgrade was expected. And it is a downgrade because I went back to the half year results, had a look at the expected expected EBITDA and EBIT, and these numbers are down. So EBITDA between 345 and 350 million, and EBIT now between 60 and 65 million. Uh, so it's a downgrade. The reasons behind it, improving pathology volume. So this is a testing company. So it's like, um, I'm pretty sure it's like Sonic Healthcare and Australian Clinical Labs. Uh, anyway, so improving pathology volumes for the half year have been offset by lower than expected average fees due to the softer GP market and general inflationary pressures, which means they don't have a moat. They have no competitive advantage. They can't increase their prices because whenever a company says there is inflationary pressures on our business, that means they have no competitive advantage. Uh, pathology volumes, which makes sense. I don't know if these any of these companies have brands when it comes to what they do. Uh, yeah, I don't know. Pathology volumes for January to May have increased by 3.9%. Um, yeah. Uh, Lumis Imaging and Agilex Biolabs have continued to perform well and in line with company expectations. Now, one of the reasons why I've been following this company is because of the chart. The chart looks like, oh, it might be starting to show some strength. And today is sort of an indication there is a bit of strength in this company's chart because we have seen some buying coming in today and share price is not down. And I am very tempted to take a position just because of what happened today, even though the company released a profit downgrade. So that's Helios coming in at number two, issued a profit downgrade, but the share price is up. There we go. Share price is up. Uh, interesting happenings for Helios. Okay. Company coming in at number one is Collins Food. Share price up 7.5% on the release of their full year results. So we had Metcash release four year results yesterday. Collins Food released four year results today. I just wish there was a calendar so we know when other companies are going to release their full year results because Metcash and Collins Food releasing their four year results was a little bit of a surprise to me. I wasn't expecting it because this time of year, you don't see many full year results being released. So obviously, the market liked it. So have a look at the chart later. This is a potential breakout, by the way. But there are some things I don't like. I'm going to open up the presentation. Now, on first glance, the numbers look really good. Now, I was actually impressed with their numbers. Of course, it's going to take ages to open up. Uh, I won't open up the... They also release the annual report because it's going to take ages. Uh, and... So let's have a look at the chart first for Collins Food, and then we'll get to a few slight red flags I have. Uh, so this is the chart, and you can see I, I did trade this in late last year into early this year, and then I took my profits, and the share price moved into a short to medium-term downtrend. So this could be the end of the downtrend. Could be. I wouldn't define this necessarily as a breakout. It's close because the share price right now is at the levels it was back in April. So we're not talking about a three-month high, but it's getting close. And this area where the share price is right now is definitely a resistance area. The reason I say that is if you just draw this little box here, and there is a reason I'm drawing the box there. I'll get rid of the moving average ribbons. Uh, we can see the share price bounced off the top of this box back in February. And then on the release, must have first of March, share price dropped eight percent on that day. Share price fell into this box and went sideways for a long time. So there's a lot of churning of shares during that or in that zone back in March through to May. So a lot of shareholders would have bought uh, during that period, and then they saw the share price dropping. So as soon as they see the share price dropping after they bought in, they go, "This is a dog stock. I've got to get out." Uh, that's the mentality of a lot. When I say a lot, I say I mean a lot of investors and what they've seen the share price pop up today so they have and what they what they do they say to themselves when the share price drops below the price they bought they say to themselves when the share price gets back up to where i bought i will sell out of this stock stock which doesn't make sense because if the share price gets back up to where you bought there's a chance the share price is now in an uptrend and there's positive momentum behind the company so it doesn't really make sense and this is why a lot of investors don't make money 
if they do that sort of strategy, if they want to sell as soon as the share price drops. So that's why we've seen a little bit of selling pressure today, not a lot, but a little bit of selling pressure today because the share price is in that zone, that, so that resistance zone. So if the share price got above about $10.50, that would be actually a fairly bullish move. So this could be a, this could be an occasion where we can be patient. Now let's have a look at the results. It's not really the results that I would, because the results I thought were pretty good. Now I didn't have any expectations, the market does, and with the share price up, probably means the market liked the results and it beat market expectations. So revenue up 10.4%. Now statutory profit up 501.9%. So you should never look at statutory profit. In fact, if you have a look at the annual report, profit is up 501%. There are reasons behind that. So look at underlying profit. So revenue up 10.4%, underlying EBITDA up 12%, profit, underlying profit up 15%. 0.6%. So you'll notice as you go down the the, uh, the profit loss statement, those percentages increase, which means margins are up. Yes, margins are up. Do they mention it here? No. Uh, operating cash flow up, de debt down, uh, fully frank dividend a little bit up from last year, but I don't really care. It's uh, dividends to me are just a nice little byproduct. It's you know I don't make any decisions based off dividends. Uh, they are increasing the amount of restaurants, 381. For those who aren't aware about this company, uh, you might have seen some logos, KFC, Taco Bell, KFC Australia, Europe. They bought quite some stores in Netherlands, Taco Bell in Australia, and they have divided the performance of uh, KFC Australia, KFC Europe, and Taco Bell uh, in this particular presentation. And there we go, right there. KFC Australia, KFC Europe, and Taco Bell. Uh, Taco Bell still loss making, I think, by a small amount. Uh, so Im impressive numbers. I, I probably you should go through this. So impressive results. I like the numbers. Uh, yeah, I, in talking about the balance sheet, then they go through the different divisions. KFC Australia, K, and you can see here margins have increased in Australia, and I'm pretty sure margins have increased in Europe as well. Yep, slightly. Uh, nice performance in Europe, by the way, and same store increases, by the way, for both. That's the other important thing. Same store increases. So in Australia, 3.8%. In Europe, and the reason this is very important, we'll, we'll get to that later. Europe, it's 4.9%. So nice same store increases. And it's interesting to see some of the products they have in Europe. And talk about Australia. Uh, well, this is not yet profitable, but that's okay. But margins are, have increased a little bit. And I don't care about ESG. Outlook. Okay. This is where I was like, oh, okay. So the, the first point for all three different parts of the business. And I'm looking for same source style. So... Uh, same store sales or SSS down in Australia by 0.8%, down in Europe by 2.3% in Netherlands, 2.8% in Germany, while Taco Bell same store sales actually up. So there is a bit of, uh, I wouldn't say underperformance, but performance for this company has slowed down in the first seven weeks of financial year 25. They talk about why, for instance, in Australia, margin pressure and cost of living challenges and they say they will persist in financial year 25. Tax and potential interest rates cuts may assist. I'm not sure about that. I think a lot of that will go straight to the mortgage. And they also talk about Europe cycling very strong growth prior year. So I was a little bit, wasn't sure how the market would react because I thought the results were pretty good, but a little bit of uh, pessimism in that outlook. But Seems like the market doesn't care about that. And the share price is up uh, about 7% today. So that's coming in number one. We have Collins Food. Now I'm just going to go through a few charts. So don't have much time now. So IPD Group, pretty good day today. And I was getting a little bit, ner not nervous, but we weren't really seeing any trends. We haven't really seen a, any trend in IPD Group share price over the past uh, year, even yeah, about a year. Share price is going flat sort of going through a consolidation period. Now, it did look like that the share price wanted to move into a downtrend. Today, for some reason, there's a bit of bullishness in it. So 
a little bit of buying has coming in. And the most important thing here is on the high volume days that they've been on days when the share price has rallied. That's actually a good sign that the buying, there's more buying coming in. So if you looked at on base, on balance volume, uh, in fact, we could do that right now. OBV, on balance volume. I wouldn't be surprised to see on balance volume increasing. Yeah, it is. So on balance volume has been increasing. So there's a bit of a diversion. Share price has been decreasing. On balance volume has been increasing. So that is an indication that this little bit of a downtrend in the share price might be a fake, fake, fake. It's all been faked. Uh, because it makes sense because uh, the on the good days, when the share price has risen, that's when you see more of the volume. On the down days, very little volume. There was one big down day here. Uh, actually, it wasn't a big down day. Share price dropped 2.9%, but there was big volume that day. But overall, there's more volume on the up days, uh, and that's actually quite positive. Uh, so when you see that divergence between the share price or the chart or the price action, and the on balance volume, that can be a good sign that you should not be frightened out um, of the share price decreasing. And today we've seen another good day where there's been good volume coming in, just like a few days ago as well. So that's IPD Group. So even though the share price is going sideways, I'm still fairly bullish longer term for this company. Uh, Dreadnought. Dreadnought, uh, there we go. So yeah, this popped onto my radar a few days ago. Uh, share price rose 29% on the 19th of June, and we've just seen a pullback. So I wouldn't be that excited about that chart just yet. And I have no idea what Dreadnought does. Uh, Mark have 91 million. And Zeldira, Zelira Therapeutics. Yeah, I, I, I just remember this company from the 31st of May, 2023, when the share price went up 224.5% in one day. Uh, unfortunately, the share price then dropped 25% and then 22.6% in consecutive days. And the share price went to a high of $3.30 and is now $0.32. Cents. So the share price has dropped 90% since that really strong day on the 31st of May, 2023. So sometimes I will say, don't be scared out by those strong movements in the share price. But the announcement must be solid enough, must be strong enough. And obviously, this announcement was more fluff then strength. So that's Zilira and Aurora Labs. Yeah, so really good looking chart. Share price hits 10 cents and has now pulled back all the way to 7.8 cents. Uh, I don't know much about this company. Is it 3D? I have a feeling this company is 3D. Uh, do, 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 do. 3D metal printers, digital parts. There have been there has been a little bit of an excitement in a three-day space the last few months. I've noticed that, and this has one of the, been one of the beneficiaries, but I have a feeling there wouldn't be much revenue generation just yet in this company. So this little movement in the share price might have been just off um, some excitement, initial excitement in that space, and also maybe some day traders saw it and went, oh, share price is in an uptrend, and I need to take uh, advantage of that, fear of missing out, that sort of thing. And now um, two big down days out of the last three, is not a good sign moving forward for Aurora Labs. You want to see some stability in the share price now. You want to see the share price not drop, uh, not not have have an not have another big down day. Okay, okay, that's all I've got for this video. I was going to do a few comments, but I'll just leave that for the next video. Okay, so uh, that's all I have for this particular video for today. If you have any questions, just leave those in the comment section of this video. Otherwise, I am not a financial advisor. If you need financial advice, make sure you seek out someone who is qualified and can speak to your own financial needs. That's it for this video. Have a good day. Bye.